Is very <laughs> Well, you know what? Let's start in pretty hot here because uh, this happened literally like the day before I left for Orlando uh, is that as I was working on uh, closing up a few things, writing a few articles for uh, on my way out, I got a loaded letter from our good buddies at Letterbox, and it was a notification uh, informing me that I had been banned for the platform based on a review that I wrote. So I was thinking to myself, well, who, what review could I have possibly written that would have gotten me kicked off of uh, the site? What, what could have possibly triggered them? to the point that they yeeted me off of uh, their platform and it turns out it was for my review of the film bros so i want to go ahead and uh, read just the letter that they gave to me and then i want to kind of go through uh my review of the movie to see maybe if there you guys agree that there's a line that i crossed here so Letterbox gave me this uh, notice right before I left that says, as you are aware, our community policy states that you must not use the service to promote or engage or incite in hate, violence, discrimination, or intolerance based on the race, age, gender, gender identity, ethnicity, uh, religion, disability, sexual preference, or other protected attributes, which is the, their words. Um, all of our members are, are required to abide by this policy and the associated uh, with our terms of service. Your review of Bros breached this policy when it was removed twice. Circumventing the removal of the review is also a violation of our policy. Due to your history of offensive language, your account has been removed from Letterboxd's service and you have 48 hours to extort your data to use elsewhere. So I ended up, uh, up submitting an appeal, which they have not responded with, uh, by the way. And I'm still waiting to see where that goes out. But as of right now, uh, email, by the way, email. Uh, as of right now, I'm still banned on Letterbox. So I figured, hey, let me pull up the review of the movie Bros to see maybe if you uh, guys can tell me exactly where I went astray. Maybe you guys can agree that there was something on here that did deserve to be banned. So pay oh, no wait, attention. Just got spoilers. Oh, yeah. So if any of you guys out there who are uh, yeah. waiting to see the movie Bros, because clearly it's made, what, 15 million in five weeks. So there's a whole bunch of people out there that are letting go see this. Uh, I know it's just called uh, a movie for now because I don't want to uh, bury the lead here. But so this is what I wrote. And I'm going to go through it as quickly as possible here to see maybe there's any red flags you guys can uh, point out about what could have possibly gotten me banned based off of this review. This is verbatim what I wrote on Letterboxd that uh, there's parents too hot for their site. As a film critic, I'm willing to look past a lot of questionable content within the context of a film uh, for the sake of storytelling, but it comes to a point where I have to draw the line when I know the filmmakers in question are operating in bad faith. So Billy Eichner has been making the waves, uh, begging anyone with a post to watch his latest uh, Universal Studios uh, film, Bros, which according to him and nobody else, is the first gay rom-com by a major studio in 100 years. In the minds of progressives, nothing existed before Donald Trump was elected president. Every six days some schmuck comes out create, uh, claiming to have created the first piece of non-hetero, non-white entertainment in history when they're too lazy or too stupid to realize that history was done decades before them. The entire sell of this film is that gay people have never had a romantic comedy for themselves, so they have settled for bad Hallmark movies and when Harry, Harry met Sally... He said, Bros is a self-insert romantic comedy about a uh, man named uh, Bobby Lieber, who's Eigner's character, who was a 40-year-old uh, single gay man living in, living in New York City as a museum, a museum uh, curator. Bobby spends his days hooking up with random men on Grindr while trying to find a small piece of what he believes to be love. During a gay rave party, uh, he meets a macho man named Aaron, and Aaron is the hunky uh, polar opposite of everything Bobby likes in men, but he manages to fall in love with him and starts what is believed to be a relationship. The rest of the film is Bobby dealing with the stress of managing his love life and his job at cre uh, creating an LGBTQ exhibit at his local museum. Now, so far, have I said anything that uh, harbors me being banned off of this platform? You Your this. introduction, I can see, my, is I'm not saying that I or I'm not saying that I would have banned you for it, mm -hmm. but I can understand where they're coming from with your introduction to the reveal. Oh yeah. I mean, they basically <laughs> said it or calling the dude a schmuck and whatnot. Yeah. It's hostile. It no came problem. off as hostile. Okay. Cause Did it gets worse. I know. <laughs> I've read. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. No, I actually wrote Donald Trump in there. So his oh, name was well, in fact, well, there you go. You can't well, on any platform. Yeah. Yep. 
I'm also curious. That, yeah. I'm curious about your appeal. It, did you just make the appeal and just say, "Is it because I'm black?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie and say that I didn't put that line in there in some uh, variation. But you know, you're only human. Uh, all right. So I continue by saying Billy Eichner was adamant that he wanted to use this film to expose audiences, especially straight audiences, to the reality of those living in the LGBTQ community. The only problem is that real life exposed them before they had the film could be released. If you recall, the original Red Band trailer for the movie featured a gay orgy scene that was meant to be shocking and play for laughs. Shortly after that scene was released, a real life global pandemic of monkeypox uh, caused the studio to shelf the promotion of the Red Band trailer as they didn't want to give audiences the idea that the sexual promiscuity of gay men spread monkeypox. Bros is a wide open window into what is uh, what sex and relationships are seen as within the LGBTQ community. The film attempts to normalize por- uh, polyamorous dating, throuples, gay orgies, <clears throat> gender reveal gay orgies, hookup culture on steroids as the norm for people within the LGBTQ community. All that stuff actually happens in the film. I didn't make any of that up. The one scene, uh, Bobby, who's Billy Eichner, uh, meets a guy on Grinder. He walks in, and within seconds, they're both laying down on the bed next to each other, masturbating before he walks home in shame. And that's considered one of uh, Bobby's hookups in the film. This is a film that uh, portrays normal sexual experiences for gay men in the big city. And you wonder why people don't want this uh, exposed in f- uh, front of their kids. The film also very much inspires uh, inspires to be the traditional uh, romantic comedy tropes that they do not work within the setting of the LGBT community. The idea that romance, the idea of romance, is bringing two people together and ending the story with them starting a new life together. Not only do Aaron and Bobby have sex multiple times in the film, but they also have sex with multiple partners throughout the movie as well. Sex is supposed to be the peak of a relationship, but when it's done uh, in the first twenty minutes of the film, you just start pissing in the for the next two hours by the way this is a two-hour movie that not tell you guys that that this is a two-hour film thank you for watching it on our behalf exactly Um, the LGBTQ community has watered down uh, sex to such a degree that what is supposed to be an intimate moment between lovers is turned into a formal greeting with no attachment and destroys the concept of the genre, the genre being a romantic comedy. Long-term relationships doesn't exist in this universe, and despite what modern-day progressives would tell you, men can't get pregnant, so there is no families starting in this scenario either. The film tries so hard to identify with heterosexual Hallmark movies that the LGBT community has spent years trying to turn it down traditionally uh, relationship standards that when they try to use those standards that they tore down to create their own love story under the same parameters the film simply doesn't work bros is a movie that tries to have his cake and eat it too the runtime is bloated the jokes aren't funny and outside of the lgbtq bubble the camera work is shot and there's nothing um basically all those those issues are issues with the film itself but none of that is the biggest sin of the movie now up to this point i don't think i've said anything that's been too harsh or certainly not true but this is where we get to a part where maybe they had a little bit of a uh, problem with what I said. Here he says, in the wake of uh, Florida's uh, parental rights and education bill, the ban uh, which bans the teaching of sexuality and transgenderism to children uh, between kindergarten and third grade, Billy Eigner inexplicably uses a rated R sex comedy to make the case for grooming children into the LGBTQ lifestyle that he has openly promoted in this film as nothing but degenerate and emotionally damaging, especially given the way the two main characters act. In this film, Aaron's mother, uh, the guy who he's dating, who knows that uh, he's gay and has no problem with that, by the way, is a school teacher who protests the idea of uh, children of elementary school age learning about LGBTQ history as is not appropriate for their age. Billy then decides to go on to a rant in the film about how his parents uh, exposed him to a sex show when he was at the age of 12 years old. And Rick, when he joins, he can uh, test this. There was a line in the film where he uh, constantly spouts out about he saw seven penises on stage. And he repeated that line repeatedly. Um, and it allowed him to be more comfortable with his sexuality. It's the argument of, well, it worked for me and I turned out normal. Now, this is probably what got me in trouble, so follow me here. 
No, Billy, it did not work for you. You are a 43-year-old miserable childless man who still has random sex with men on social media apps. Using your life as the measuring stick to groom children into your lifestyle is unacceptable. The film concludes with school-aged children going to Bobby's LGBTQ exhibit, cementing its pro-groomer me uh, message of helping gay children in an explicit sex comedy. Out of the respect and professionalism, I was willing to turn a blind eye to a lot of stuff for the sake of this review. Adults are adults, and then, uh, let them make bad decisions. But the second that the film tries to make the argument that grooming children into their 115 minutes of degeneracy that is presented in this film by their own admission, that's where we cross the line. And I ended up uh, posting here that the LGBT community has used uh, bros as a window into their lifestyle. It's instead, they have used it as a door to the Trojan horse that we let into the gates. Now, obviously, I did not have the middle finger in my review because you can't do that in Letterboxd, so I just gave it a half star. But that was the review that Letterboxd said was not acceptable for Isn't their site. Letterboxd sort of where everybody can post a review of whatever they think of any movie? Why? Is yes, uh, unless it's... Unless it's Matt Walsh's uh, "Don't uh, What Is a Woman" because you can't review that one on the site at Why all. Why not? What if because they won't goes to Letterbox wanting to look up the review for that movie? Well, if if you go there right now, it will tell you that um, due to high moderation content, that uh, no reviews are allowed on public view. You can only look at uh, reviews of people who you follow. You can look at their reviews of the movie, but you can't look at anybody else's. They completely so shut they it off. They banned you, even though only people that follow you could read your reviews. No, no, no. That, that's just specifically for uh, Matt Walsh's movie. They banned me on, for, for this review on no, the film what I mean Bros. Is, completely. Like, if I went to Letterboxd right now without an account and I didn't follow any reviewers, could I see reviews? Uh, no. So I have to pick what reviewers I yeah. want to read reviews from, right? Yep. So if I get to pick whose voice and whose opinions about movies, how on earth does Letterboxd justify shutting you down? Because the only people following you are the people that appreciate your voice and your opinion on movies. Well, like I said, there's certain opinions of certain films that they do not appreciate on Letterboxd. Keep in mind, this is my third run-in with, with Letterboxd. This isn't the oh, first time. Right. I had a run-in with Not them. Yeah, I had a run in with them about three years ago for the movie uh, Queen and Slim, which is like a pro Black Lives Matter movie. They originally banned me for that review and then reinstated me after the story went viral and they couldn't like deny that they just like purposely banned me for no reason. And then a year afterwards, they banned me for a review I had on the film Unpregnant, which is a pro abortion movie. And because I had a negative review on that one, they censored it three times. So this is my third run in with Letterboxd about a movie that they're trying to project based on the agenda of the film itself you're incorrect. know why you got banned dude yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> the reason why you got banned is because you said that men cannot have children there you go ousted yeah you no, i feel it you hit every buzzword that they absolutely hate that's why they banned you yeah but in the context of the review i didn't say anything that was untrue no, no, no you didn't. About that. Well, you didn't I make up your opinion. You. It's your opinion of all of it. And and I was stunned, frankly, when I saw that red band trailer. I knew, well, this isn't for me. I don't care if they want to make movies like that. Yeah. But the grooming message that you mentioned, I, I had no idea, but it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. And even Spencer had mentioned it at one point. Like, this is clearly not a movie for kids. So it's like you wouldn't take your kids to go see the movie like this just based on the content alone. But for a movie that's not for kids, there's sure a hell of a lot of children in this film, especially in the third act, which makes you kind of wonder why would you even try to have this kind of message in a film like this? Well, I, mean, I think it's to help influence the ignorant people who haven't made up their mind about drag queen story hour or grooming for kids you know what i mean it's like yeah. hey, look, billy eichner turned out okay at least that's what he tells us you know because like i said this isn't a movie you're going to take your kids to so why are you even having a discussion about uh elementary age children in in the first place like is he trying to influence the parents that's the only possible way that you can justify uh, having that message in the film to begin with that you're trying to influence the parents and if that was your intention i think you failed miserably because look you saw the box office results nobody went to go see this movie 
like 15 million in like five weeks. That's all this movie has made, money has made. And then they moved the, um, because the way that uh, NBC Universal works, this is a Universal Pictures movie, is that after 45 days, it's supposed to move to Peacock. Well, this one was bombing so bad, they moved it in less than 30 days in, in order to try to recoup the money that they were losing on it. Because after five weeks, it hasn't even made back its production budget, which was only $22 million. What a shame. Now, this is what I think is funny, though, is that mm-hmm. you have um, people attacking... Um, others for like people that are either joking or whatnot um that shit makima and denji and chainsaw man and denji yeah. is 16 years old and fujimoto made it clear that this is like um like a mother complex kind of thing because of denji's upbringing but here it's completely different it is straight up grooming and yeah. you got people calling makima a groomer i've seen like People uh, call um, the Magica of maybe this a groomer and a pedo. And it's just the weirdest thing that you have all this going on, but they're attacking you for calling um, this movie out. It's the, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, what, what is even the purpose of trying to protect a movie that literally nobody saw? To, to begin like this, like this isn't like we're trying to protect like the box office results of this film you saw that a lot with the film like the woman king where they were really trying to stifle any kind of uh criticism towards that film because they knew that they had like a 50 dollar price tag on the movie from the production side alone so it's like we can't have any negative reviews on it that's going to discourage people from not watching this money this movie because we have a lot of money attached to it this film was already bombing weeks before uh this whole band thing came up so it feels like there was some moderator on the site who was specifically looking for any kind of negative reviews about this movie and then sorted minds out and then it's like oh no we can't allow this on, on our site so we're just gonna ban it because i think I think on Letterbox right now, this film has an average rating of like three and a half stars, between three and a half stars and four stars, which is absolutely ridiculous. But of course, they can't have the narrative in there that this is just simply a bad movie because, well, they have an ideology behind this that they have to try to protect. Could they censor uh, parts of your review that they found egregious and just let you back on? Did you offer to let them? blackout or something like that no so what happened like when i got banned for queen and slim they reinstated my account but they simply just blocked uh the review altogether they, they removed it so they wouldn't allow me to put the review back on same thing happened with unpregnant uh, i tried to uh repost the review because here's the thing too when they remove your review they don't tell you like what specifically is the problem with your review they don't say that hey you use this word and we don't like this word or hey they said that you know they'll just get to go to their terms of service saying the oh you incited hate and discrimination against all of these groups right here that aren't white and it's like okay but what specifically was wrong with the review that you didn't like because if that's the case if you just want me to remove hey can you remove this line right here yeah, this yeah. you find offensive that could be like okay whatever but they didn't they don't even do that they just remove your review altogether it's like okay well if you don't even tell me what's wrong with the review and there's nothing on it. And, and the same review that I posted on multiple other sites, by the way, and none got any pushback from them, even more uh, like national like sites, stuff like that. So if you don't tell me what's wrong with it, I'm just going to assume that, OK, one of your moderators is ego tripping and uh, simply didn't want something on there they didn't like. Even the scummy moderators that read it will generally tell you why they banned you. Yeah. At least they will tell you what they didn't like about you as they throw you out, you know. So, yeah, so th- this, bad. yeah, so I mean, like I said, I, I, I submitted their appeal and uh, I haven't heard anything back from them yet. So it's been a few days. The account is still banned and I was almost at a thousand reviews on oh, the site man, before man. they this went is, and pulled the plug important to you. This is important to you. I can tell this is a this is a, a hill you want to die. Yeah, on. feel it. I mean, the one thing that I do like about um, Letterbox is that it's very easy to organize the movies that I've already seen and have reviewed like year by year. So I do like the organization process yeah. of there. The reviews itself are like hit and miss. I when I get like really popular like reviews, like when I get like a lot of people that I like them, I'll start getting like a lot of flack from a lot of the say the left wing uh, people on there. Like before I got banned from Letterbox, I did a review for the Adam Carolla Dennis Prager uh, film. Year years ago was like no safe space or something like that yeah 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 
I posted that like four years ago. People are still arguing in the comments about my review to this day. <laughs> like it, I, I even, I even posted on like the the review. Like, dude, I posted this four years ago. Like, move on. Like, I, I reviewed like four hundred other movies since then. You guys are still bitching about this one review. Like, move on here, people. That's what we do. 